Hi, I hope you're all doing well. I had some very interesting letters in the past couple of weeks, actually past couple of months from wildlife people, just intermittently. And then I had one good conversation. I thought I'll share that with you because uh, it's kind of exciting. So I guess while this COVID thing has been going on, of course, nature continues. There's no, um, there are no vaccines and no health care for the wild animals but everything continues in the wildlife numbers. Apparently, of course, it's a big world, depends on which area you're in, but overall, wildlife populations are up. And in North America, in particular, the fellow mentioned that bear populations are soaring. And I received letters from some, some younger hunters who were talking about going after bear. And uh, they asked me to talk about carbines I, or carbines because uh, I've never made such a video. So I thought, well, fair enough. I was actually working on some heavy duty other videos, but I thought that's a practical question. And I uh, pulled out some, I've got some loners here, uh, but we'll cover some good ground and these will be familiar to you. These are, I would say, readily available. You can more or less pick which one you want. Uh, so if, I guess first off, some of the people were asking what's a carbine or a carbine. I'll stick with carbine just because that's what I was raised with. Um, sorry if that's not the right way to say it. Anyway, um, it's essentially just a short rifle, which you probably know. And there are lots of them out there. Probably the best known carbine of all and in many ways still the best quote unquote carbine depending on the distances involved is the Model 94, primarily because you can carry it so easily. And so for, for you younger fellows of all ages, um, plunging into thickets, you know, you don't want to be carrying a, a rifle with a 24 inch barrel and a long action like this bar in 308. It's a excellent rifle, but you know what those willow thickets are like and depending on where you are in Europe or Northern Europe, it gets so thick that uh, anything extra in length becomes a liability. Sometimes front sights get snagged if you have sights on your rifle, uh, scopes get snagged. I mean, I've fallen down in swamps too many times with all the deadfalls and windfall. So carbines make sense. Um, this one is made, this Model 94 is a Moroku, Absolutely fantastic accuracy, 30-30. Uh, you could get a, you could get a pre-64, a post-64, tang safety like this one has, or a crossbolt safety, which everybody says is no good, but I like them. Uh, these are excellent, but you are restricted to a rimmed cartridge. So other than that, if you wanted to go the military surplus route, and one of my favorite. These used to be so cheap, not so cheap anymore. Uh, Spanish Mauser, this one's not modified, seven by 57, just a tremendous action. If you buy one of these um, or, or handle one, it'll probably remind you of the Swedish Mauser. It's a little bit simpler, let's put it that way. Accuracy is excellent, probably partly because of the action and also the cartridge, 7x57 is great. This is a very handy rifle. And if you're not um, totally dedicated or need to use a telescope, telescopic sight, um, <laughs> these, are, these are amazing. And um, yeah, I guess, you know, you're kind of clawing your way back in time with the Mauser and with the Model 94 for a different kind of hunting experience from some of the modern rifles. Anyway, that's a, that's a great one to buy, but probably you'll want something with a scope. Uh, so here's one that I actually, uh, not this very rifle, but I hunted with these uh, model 600s and 660s made by Remington. This one's a model 600. Um, some of them had these zany kind of ventilated ribs on them. You can always tell these by that odd uh, bolt handle, which I, I, I never had a problem with. It's good. It works and it keeps the bolt quite close to the stock. I've heard stories from all kinds of hunters and shooters where this was designed in this way because of the, 
um, scabbard use. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't own any horses, so I, I just walk around. Um, th these still have that great steel feeling. And in a moment, we're going to look at a Model 7, which is a great rifle too. But uh, this new method of manufacturing steel feels different these days. And I think on another video, we went into all the different techniques and metallurgy and so on. I'm not sure I understand it all, but I like the feeling of this action. This one's in 308. I had a 243. Usually amazing accuracy. One thing that tends to go on them is see this floor plate? Uh, this one's plastic. And this one's not too bad, but because of the pressure of the magazine spring, they tend to kind of bow out here. And so this vent outfit in the States makes these great aluminum ones. Yeah, you can't hear it, but it's aluminum. So I'll just pop this one on this one. And um, somebody always takes off the iron sights. I don't know why. All the holes are here, so I'll replace the sights. And this would be ideal for bear in the tightest places. Also, it's a Mohawk. You can look that up. Mohawk 600. And it's got a butt plate and everything. It's all original. But, you know, they're not cheap. Not, not, nothing's cheap anymore with inflation. Um, but it's a rifle that you definitely will feel comfortable hunting with. It's not exhibition grade walnut. So the 600 is good. And that leads me, I may as well do the Model 7. So when the 600 disappeared with that interesting bolt handle, the Remington bought out the Model 7, um, which is a great short action. I should have said that uh, before. Remington had the set model 700, 721, 725 in long and short action, but they thought they should have a, a rifle that's just a short action. And I'm kind of simplifying the story, but the 600 was the first answer and then the model seven came out. Still one of the fastest handling uh, rifles ever. And this one has just an excellent stock it's threaded uh, for my broad collection of suppressors. I have none. Uh, and, and, oh, and it's not, this was, this rifle did not look this way. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. It was, it was a funny name. It was like the Model 7 Cuckoo or something like that. And it had a polymer stock, a uh, really dramatic kind of jungle um, camo stock, you know, for whitetails in the deep, jungles and marshes and swamps and I got tired of looking at that stock so I waited and along came this beautiful walnut stock. Um, you can see the floor plate sticks up a little bit. That's because this stock is a little deeper than that cuckoo stock and so I'll have to get a longer screw. But it's it, this one is just it's one of the fastest handling carbines like ever in a bolt action. Just great. Uh, then if you decide that you want something like really classy, this is like Cadillac, Mercedes, whatever you want to call it. Didn't start out that way. Uh, I think Bill Ruger wanted to copy, not copy, but emulate the Van Licker Schoenauer, which I have here. This is in model 1903. Obviously it's not a complete rifle. I'm just in the lifelong process of rebuilding this one. But this was one of the original great carbines. You could look those up. Madlicker Schoenauer model 1903 in 6.5 by 54. Did Hemingway use them? If he didn't, it sure sounds good that he did. Anyway, <clears throat> model um, 77 RSI. Again, what an elegant rifle, you know, with the full stock. Barrel length is 18 and a half inches caliber 308. The 7 was a 308. The 600 was a 308. I think I said 7 by 57 for the Spanish Mauser. People scold me because I forget to mention calibers. It's worth mentioning that when you have a full size action, you lose a lot of overall length to the action size. So that's why the Model 7 and the abbreviated actions and of course the falling blocks we've got one on the table are just fundamentally shorter 
the action is, that means that the barrel can be longer and the overall length is the same or less than um, a regular rifle. Anyway, to get the compact size, uh, Ruger has a, essentially a long action, even though it's a little bit shorter, uh, but the 18 and a half inch barrel carries the day. So overall it's, it's short and you know that it's a floor plate model and things like that. And I mean, it's a slick action. Uh, it still has the Tang safety here, which is um, to me great. They switched to a different type of safety on the Mark II. And then the Hawkeye is very similar to the Mark II, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, there are some great choices on the table here. Um, they all have a lot of character and all are excellent in the accuracy department. This, this RSI is a real gem. Uh, so why is this on the table? Well, here's an example of a rifle that I would not take into the willow thickets or swamps or anything. Um, not because of its function, it would work perfectly. It's, but this is a big, long uh, rifle. Uh, but the reason I put it on the table is to remind myself. I ran into a young fellow, this goes back at least 10 years, and the barrel ended here. And if you can picture that, it was one of the coolest looking carbines ever. So I asked him, um, he, had, he moved the site or he had somebody move the site. It, it just looked very cool. And he explained that he had to shorten the barrel because he wanted it to be uh, light and handy. And he also forgot a, a cleaning patch in the, in the barrel. And so he had to, to have it shortened. Uh, but that's why I have this here. That turned out uh, as, I mean, they should make them just beautiful carbine. Um, other than that, I don't think the bar is available. Maybe some of the new models like the Zenith um, or the current models with the aluminum receiver. I couldn't fit all the rifles on the table as usual or carbines. Model 100 Winchester in the carbine. What a great rifle. I have one left in 284, I just keep that one. Um, they make them in 308, 243, beautiful handling. The Ruger 44 Magnum semi-auto, we've done videos on that beautiful carbine. And since I'm talking about the semi-autos, one of the most affordable is the 742 carbine. Ordinarily, I would put, you know, um, white out in here or, or whatever the people do for me. Um, these are available in carbine, this one's a this one's a 308, so just a, a perfect cartridge. Uh, maybe they're available in 243. Again, these have to be one of the most underpriced uh, rifles slash carbines. The great, great unit. And then moving to something really classy, which in terms of overall length, uh, this Ruger in 4570 is about the same length as the Model 94. And it has the longer barrel, but the action is so short. This would be, you know, if, you've, if you're sure that you're not going to have to need repeat shots. But this, I think we made a video one winter we went out and, and filmed. And I've, I thought about selling this 4570 a few times, but I just can't get around to doing it. It's just so sharp with that, that salt and pepper or pepper laminate stock and the stainless steel um, yeah just great rifles all of them we there are countless carbines carbines uh, this one is the shortest of them all this is the 1885 browning i was looking before filming and they call it the trapper limited edition 4570 it's not that uncomfortable to shoot i mean it's it, it'll It'll remind you that it's there. Um, yeah, but it's not too bad. It doesn't have that wicked crescent butt plate that some of them have. Uh, so it's, it's not too bad, especially if you use those cowboy action loads or something like that. And the action you're all familiar with, this is very short. So is the barrel. But the package itself is probably one of the most compact units of all. Caught my finger. Um, yeah, but I thought I'd put it on the table. I, I actually took this whitetail hunting. I didn't get anything that year. 
but it was kind of neat creeping around with um, with something so easy to handle it it's it, you, it never gets past your body if you don't want it to in the deep bush so i thought that's a a little bit of a coverage i don't know which one caught your eye they're all very cool and worth owning there's never a problem if you buy it and use it for a year there there's a ready market and guns just keep going up in value some of my videos the people say the prices i refer to are way off and it's true because in a short period of time a lot of the prices have doubled it's just the calibration that's changing like the, because they keep printing money so each dollar is worth less you've heard me say this before and i wouldn't be surprised if one of these is you know maybe 2500 or three grand in not that long a period of time anyway i hope that's fair coverage um, somebody usually asks me which is my favorite of all these well of the of the more expensive ones i mean who can argue with this ruger it's got you it could be your own only rifle it's, uh, it's got everything uh just beautifully made but i like the ruger number one and if i just felt like grabbing one of these and going hunting i'd probably take the i i, I need the metallic sights uh, put on the aluminum floor plate this thing has a lot of character very handy never have to worry about it it's not a polymer stock but it's it's not a fancy stock either just excellent rifle and i like that model 7 too uh, but i don't know somehow these are great if you can find a mohawk just buy it you'll never look back doesn't matter what caliber it is but i like the 308 243 is good all right well that's a lot of ground to cover i tried to speak a little more quickly some people write me that i put i put you guys to sleep uh, although that can be useful too anyway um, thank you very much for being here as always um, hopefully everything is getting better for you and you're all healthy and safe someplace and on this good earth and take care until our next video bye